there. Thank you so much for joining today with Marilyn and Sarah. We are thrilled to get some time with you. And I know your time is so valuable. We can make money, but we can't make time. So thank you for taking time with us. And partners, thank you for helping us to cover the earth with the word. We couldn't do what we do without our partners, without you. So thank you for making this program available today, right? I'm mean, seriously, without you, we couldn't be with you today. So thank you again and again and again. And I want to encourage you with a testimony. A friend of mine recently was talking to me about um, she had her own business and she was really struggling in it and there was taxes coming due and she was concerned she was going to have to declare bankruptcy and everything and we prayed together and God completely turned her business around and the taxes that she thought was due, they were forgiven and actually she got a reduction in her rental uh, agreement and just saw God absolutely come in and do a miracle. So. I want to encourage you to hop on the phone, get on the website. We know that God answers prayer. So whatever the need is in your life, we want to pray with you. And we want to give God the opportunity to step in and do something supernatural. And mom, we know that nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is. No. And our guest today, oh, the book that she has, Revival is Rising, yeah. is awesome because you know, we think, oh, so many negative things. We hear so much bad news. But this book and her message is absolutely good news. And good news is better than bad news. So I'm really excited that you are going to be watching this and experiencing good news. So this is a wonderful thing. And again, we thank you for watching, but you're going to thank us for bringing such a wonderful guest and book to you. I don't have a safe place to sleep on. I am scared. I don't have enough nutrition. I might starve. I live where there are little resources. I don't have a safe place to deliver my baby. We live in a war zone. And then, Saving Moses. Saving Moses gives me a safe place to sleep at night. Saving Moses gave me the therapeutic milk I need to thrive. Saving Moses provided someone to help me deliver my baby safely. It's so wonderful to have you watching today with Marilyn and Sarah, and I am super stoked to introduce to you a really cool friend, Kim Meter. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you, friend. Thank you, Kim. <clears throat> Kim has a really cool uh, Crystal Peaks ministry outreach for uh, broken horses and broken kids. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and pairing those together. But Kim, you have this really cool book called Revival mm -hmm. Rising. Yes. And I love this book. And one of the things you talk about is Holy Spirit working in mm -hmm. us. Um, and how do you see Holy Spirit working in you um, and in your ministry at this time? I see the whole world in pictures. And I love that Jesus used parables to teach something that we could see to illustrate something we're trying to learn. And to answer your question, recently I was at home and it was in the morning. It was the first warmish morning. I didn't light a fire in our giant wood stove. We live in super cold country. And I'm sitting next to a cold wood stove with my Bible on my lap, and I could hear this commotion overhead, which, uh, which could only be a bird has just fallen into the stovepipe and is trying to get out, can't, and is falling down the stovepipe and finally falls all the way into the firebox, sees the light, flies toward it, <laughs> and hits the glass. And I just thought, oh, honey, Dear. I'm sorry. Yeah. And so I set my things aside and got down and looked in, and it was a female starling, which is thought by most to be the most despised bird on earth oh. because they're invasive, they steal food, they overtake uh, other birds' habitats and nests, and they, they carry disease. And a lot of people potentially would just leave her to die in this blackened ash place. And as I looked at her, she was in the very furthest corner, covered in ash, and I could hear the Lord saying, yeah, that's kind of like you when I found you. 
you had fallen into a place that you could not escape, a place of sorrow and suffering and pain. And it makes me cry even now. I went and I got a towel and I put it over the door and I reached in and carefully took her out in my palm and walked out onto our deck, holding this bird in my hand and just flattened my hand and she flew hard and fast into the freedom that was offered to her. When it comes to the Holy Spirit working in God's people, that's exactly what Jesus came to do, is to, he sees us in our burned blackened place. And because of love, he doesn't leave us there. He's the one who reaches in and draws us out and says, I see what you can become. I'm offering you my freedom. Galatians 5.1 says, it's for freedom that Jesus Christ has set us free. That bird didn't ask questions. She didn't look at me. She didn't ponder. She didn't process. She didn't need to talk about it. She knew she was free, and she never looked back. And that's what the Holy Spirit is asking you and I to do. Here's what she didn't do. She didn't fly over my shoulder back into the living room, into the firebox, and close the door. And as believers often, we are free, we are free, we are free. And yet we return back to the firebox and cry and complain and say, God, where are you? Where are you? When it is for freedom that he came. He is the author of freedom. And that hand of hope is reaching for you and I every minute of every day. If we find ourselves not free in any portion of our life, it's for one reason only. I'm not choosing it. And if you are finding yourself in a dark, ashen place today, that you cannot escape. There is only one hope, and that is the author of hope. And his name is Jesus. And it is he who is reaching for you today. And on this day, will you reach back? That's really powerful. And you might be watching right now, and you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart. Or mm. maybe you asked Jesus to come in, but you've been cold, and you need a do-over. You need a brand new beginning with Jesus. Hop on the phone right now. We want to pray with you to receive Jesus into your heart, either brand new or like a fresh start, a brand new beginning. But this is where revival starts. Revival mm -hmm. starts with Jesus coming into our hearts and breathing life into what seems dead, what seems hopeless, what seems trapped, what seems like it can't change. It'll never, never have any life to it. Jesus breathes life yes. into us. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you. Number one, to have your own personal relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. and then to walk in that fullness. And you know, Kim, it's interesting. You think about John 20, um, when Jesus was risen from the dead, um, it said he, after he, after resurrection, he came and breathed on his disciples mm -hmm. and said, receive Holy Spirit. Yes. And how do you see Holy Spirit breathing into us? Because you talk about it in Revival Rising. How do you see Holy Spirit breathing into us um, kind of purpose and destiny and design and, and, and really uh, uh, fulfillment in our lives? Whew, that's a huge question. And the first thing that comes to my mind is, is 1 John 2.27 where uh, John says that, that the Holy Spirit, because we have the Holy Spirit, he's the one who uh, leads us, in, he's the one who speaks truth into our life and that what he speaks is true and that we don't need anyone to teach us truth because he will teach us everything we need to know and what he says is true. And a bad paraphrase, <laughs> but so often we have the author and the leader of truth within us and I don't trust him mm. to be able to handle this situation better than I think I know. And that, that infilling of the Holy Spirit is quenched by my pride in not allowing him to lead this vessel. And the moment that we say, I trust you more than my, my pride, my fear, my education, my vast experiences, all my logic and, and my emotions, oh my goodness, way more than those. I trust you more than all of that. I'm following you. And that's where we see that supernatural infilling of the spirit of heaven and everything that he is, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control comes in and fills us up. And the overflow, which John talks about many times, that your joy will overflow. 
And it's that overflow around us that transforms the world around us with the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through us. That is literally heaven coming to earth through God's people. And that's how Jesus taught us to pray. Mm -hmm. God, that your will would be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And you share this in your book. Yes, ma'am. And it is really clear and wonderful. Now, I don't know what you do with books, but I underline things. And I put question marks <laughs> by some of the things. And, you know, I put stars because there are things I want to take hold of that book. I don't want to just be entertained. Mm. I want to be transformed. Amen. And I don't think you want to be entertained only, but you want to be transformed. So be sure you call in and get Revival Rising. It's a must for you. Trust me, it's a must for you. Mm. The other thing too, Kim, you're talking here about the power of, a tes the power of your testimony, mm. right? And, and the importance of testimony. Why is that such an important issue? You know, we hear testimonies from other people, but what about like on a personal level, why is my testimony, why is the viewer's testimony, why is that important? What a great question that, that there are five weapons of warfare that the enemy has no defense against. None, 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 none. The word of God, worship of God, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and the power of oh, our, Lord, testimony. our testimony. Revelations 12, 10 and 11 is true, which says it has happened at last. Satan is defeated by what Jesus Christ did on the cross. It's already happened. And the power of your testimony. When you speak of what Jesus Christ has done for you, the enemy's power is completely broken off. He is powerless against every time a believer opens their mouth and says, I know what you're going through. I've been through something very similar. You're going to be okay, and here's how I know. Let me tell you what Jesus Christ has done for me. And if he can bring this healing and redemption into this life, he wants to bring this healing and redemption into your life as well. On this day, will you let him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And I think in, in here, uh, you talk about testimonies and you share testimonies. And yes, I know like listening to stories and stuff, you hear God doing amazing things and it stirs up my faith and it'll stir up your faith mm -hmm. as well. So grab your copy of Revival Rising. This will absolutely help illuminate, kind of pour some fresh life into you, recognize God's presence, the Holy Spirit working in your life, and really encourage you that God can do the impossible. So grab your copy of Revival Rising. This book will put fresh life and fresh vision into your heart and into your soul. Revival happens when passion for God breaks through and ignites one heart after another with His unquenchable love. For your gift of $33 or more, we will send you Kim Meter's book, Revival Rising. Explained with enthusiasm and vibrancy, this book encourages you to transform your heart, soul, mind, and strength by engaging the holy fire of God's presence. We will also send you Sarah's In Step with the Spirit book, Marilyn's Desire the Fire CD teaching, and our Identity Scripture card. And for your gift of $70 or more, we will include the NLT Daily Bible, this soft leather-like Bible is designed to help you read the Bible in one year. Organized by the calendar day, as well as the traditional ordering of the books, you will know exactly how much reading to do every day to read through the Bible in one year. Accept Jesus' commission to carry the living flame of His love wherever He leads. Call or click today. Sarah Bowling, Living Genuine Love, is on a mission to connect every one with the heart of God. With a passion for the Bible and the gift of teaching, Sarah brings a new perspective to articulate God's life-giving revelation to our modern moment. God's heart relentlessly reaches all our hidden places and changes us from the inside out. And Living Genuine Love is equipping people with resources and tools that empower them to walk in this intimate relationship with God. Sarah is a powerful scholar and spirit-led teacher with a gift and passion that takes her many places around the world to bring lasting change to each of us who are craving the transformative love of God. At Living Genuine Love, we're committed to seeing you walk in a vibrant relationship with God every day. Learn more about Sarah Bowling and her ministry, Living Genuine Love, by visiting sarahbowling.org or call us at 800 
627-1995. Do you like truth that changes your day? I do. I like to wake up in the morning with very positive things. And so today, you are going to see revival rising. That's very positive. That's not going down. That's going up. I want to go up every day. I want every day. I want every day to be supernatural. And I believe you do too. You don't want to just be natural, do you? You're born again. Come on. You're a Christian. We live supernatural lives. And don't tell me we don't. It's too late because I'm older than you. So I know how wonderful it is. And in Revival Rising, we see that we can live in a rising attitude instead of down the drain. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the good news, not the bad news. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a special guest, Kim Meter, and she's written a book, Revival Rising, and I'm pushing it. You say, you're always pushing something. You're always right. I am. I'm pushing you because you need the book. But tell us why we need the book. Marilyn, you were just speaking about we have this choice to either have our focus down on everything that hurts and is broken in our dark circumstances and this the chaotic times that we live in, or we can focus on the hope that we have that Jesus Christ offers. And I see the whole world in pictures. And, and the Lord is so kind to show me over and over the power of his word through the things that I experience. And, and I'm a wilderness woman, and I love the deeper, higher up, as far away as I can get, because that's where I experience truly the voice of God. And it's my truest church and where I know him the most clearly, because I can see him through everything that he's made. And I'm always hunting and looking for things and sneaking up on animals. And it's just my delight. (laughs) And I was in deep, deep, deep wilderness with a friend of mine. And we always go to this very special place. And we call it the Hallowed Hills because a lot of elk live there. And we like to try to find sheds and just find them. And we were hiking along and we were quite a distance apart. And I came upon a site that I see often in the wilderness. And there was some bones on the ground. And as the cycle of life, wherever there's animals or prey, there will be predators too. And so I went down to investigate and my grandfather was an outdoorsman and he taught me how to track and trap and hunt and fish and how to read the environment because that will keep you alive. And I could see this mortal struggle on the ground and all the marks in the earth and and a, a young yearling cow, elk, had been taken down and was there. And as I'm looking around, all of a sudden, all my hackles go up and I'm realizing something is wrong. Something is wrong. There's too many parts here. And then I realized there was, it was a kill on top of a kill. Mm-hmm. And as, and as evidenced by this, the, the other carcass had antlers. And all of a sudden I, I looked back and I could see feces on the skull of one of these kills and only one predator does that and that's canine and that's a wolf. And that is wolf for this is mine and if you touch it, I'll kill you too. And I had just walked into a wolf kill zone and there was still food on the ground. They were right there. They were just out of my sight. Called my dog to my heel, put my shoulders back and kept walking and in a quarter of a mile walked through six more. Wow. that the wolves had followed the elk into the hallowed hills. And the next day, as my friend and I drove for over an hour just to get to pavement, and we're talking about, oh, my goodness, what we just experienced, and we're driving this very forgotten road, and we swing around a turn, and here in the road is something we've never experienced before, were two lost dogs, just, just so exhausted they were just stopped in the middle of the road and we rolled to a stop, I got out and, and it was an older male and a younger female and the older male was so exhausted, his hind end was, he, he could barely stand. He was like, oh baby, come on, come on buddy, it's okay. And he received 
the offer for help instantly. And I went over and I opened the door of the truck and I patted the floorboards. Come on, come on. I'm inviting you into my rescue. And he came, and this always makes me cry. He put his front paws up and he's just trembling in the hind end and he can't jump. He's too weak. Mm. Oh. And he just looks at me in this canine expression of, I want your rescue, but I'm too weak. Will you pick me up oh. and put me into the rescue that you offer? And how much that's just like Jesus in us. And in that there are times in our life when we are so beyond our ability, we're so weak that we have to trust Jesus to lift us up into the rescue of his father's love. And so now the second dog is alone and afraid and she's circling the truck. You cannot chase someone who's afraid. Mm -hmm. So I just sat down and waited for her to come to me. And how much the Lord does that with us when we have fear. He will not chase us down. He waits for us to turn and face. And once she was able to do that, I was able to carefully put her into the rescue, knowing had these dogs spent one night in the wilderness, they would have been annihilated by the wolves. And the story, uh, it's a long encounter. We drove 50 miles to a town that has fewer people than that. And as supernatural, how God reunited the dogs with the, their master. Wow. And what we learned wow. was that the master lived off grid and has a, a sanctuary where these dogs live. He told them to stay and they yahooed out through the wilderness until they were so lost they couldn't find their way back. And how much that is like you and I, that God offers us this sanctuary and this protection in his presence in this realm, in this climate, uh, uh, violence and virus and politics, we have a shelter in our God. And sometimes we get drawn out by fear or pride or, or shame or guilt or addictions or, or, or whatever sin attacks. And we realize I'm lost in a wilderness that I'm going to be destroyed in and I don't know how to get home. And I want you to know that it is the love of Jesus that drives up and opens the door and says, I found you, I found you. Mm. Don't you know how much I love you? Come on, buddy, come on, son, come on, my sister. I'm offering you rescue and redemption, but you gotta get in the truck and, and he will help us, but we must come to him. And I'm thinking about 2 Chronicles 7, 14, where God himself says, if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn away from your wilderness, then I'm gonna hear from heaven, I'm gonna forgive you and I'm gonna heal your land, beginning with the land of your heart. And all that starts with us humbling ourselves and praying, talking to God, admitting we need him, talking to him and then pursuing him into the truck and leaving our wilderness of sin behind. Will you do that today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So powerful. Sweet, yeah. sweet. But could we just stop and invite people to pray right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think this is a very important moment. And I, I know just one prayer mm -hmm. can change your life forever. Amen. I want to lead you in that prayer. And maybe you've never prayed the prayer or maybe you have, but you need to recommit. So Father, we know you love everyone that we're praying with. So we're calling on you as our heavenly Father. We're repenting of all of our sins, all of the junk, all of the trash that has been committed in our life. And we're taking the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin, all, all. And we thank you for that blood that it's speaking better things for us right now. Yes, In Jesus. Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, we would really love to hear from you because we have a prayer team that will grab hold of your life and pray for you also. So please call us. And, you know, we're not asking for anything but to hold you up mm. and to see God move in your life. 
And we're so happy today. I can tell you, when I received Jesus, my life began. It's wonderful. God bless you. Trust you. Go on with him. And know that really, today is the best day of your life. Revival happens when passion for God breaks through and ignites one heart after another with His unquenchable love. For your gift of $33 or more, we will send you Kim Meter's book, Revival Rising. Explained with enthusiasm and vibrancy, this book encourages you to transform your heart, soul, mind, and strength by engaging the holy fire of God's presence. We will also send you Sarah's In Step with the Spirit book, Marilyn's Desire the Fire CD teaching, and our Identity Scripture card. And for your gift of $70 or more, we will include the NLT Daily Bible. This soft leather-like Bible is designed to help you read the Bible in one year. Organized by the calendar day, as well as the traditional ordering of the books, you will know exactly how much reading to do every day to read through the Bible in one year. Accept Jesus' commission to carry the living flame of His love wherever He leads. Call or click today. We are so glad that you have watched this program with us. And Kim, you know, writing this book, Revival Rising, I want you to pray. Would you please pray for each person watching that revival would rise in their hearts? Mm, yes, ma'am. Jesus, Jesus, Lord Jesus, I pray over every man, woman, and child who is watching today that feels like they have been lost in a wilderness of pain and suffering that is surrounded by wolves and they're being run down. And Jesus, right now, by the power of your love, you burst onto the scene and open the door and say, I found you, I found you. I'm inviting you into the redemption of my loving salvation. Will you choose me today? I'm here to rescue you. Will you get in the truck? Get in the truck, get in the truck of my love for you. And so right now, Jesus, I pray that everyone who is listening would leave that place of pain behind and move forward, receiving your outstretched hand, and they would move into the presence of the love of the Father. These things we ask today by your name. Amen. Amen. And we want you to do this. We want you to say today is the best day of my life. Why? Because Jesus lives big in me. And we say it, we believe it, and honey, I receive it. I like every day to be the best day, and so do you.